Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with what is quickly becoming a fan favorite, our Sunday conversations with Mr. Dan Bird. How you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, Thanksgiving watching- week. It is. And next week's Thanksgiving week. Let me be the first to, and not the last to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we will not be recording next Sunday as I will be out and about with my uh, daughter and wife. So uh, I'm not recording anything next Sunday. So uh, we'll be. Well, we'll how are people going to know to sell everything? <laughs> They're not. They're just going to have to wait. They're just going to have to wait. <laughs> uh, I but so uh, I want to talk about last week. I think uh, uh, Bullard. Kind of threw some uh, a curveball, frankly, that I expected and, and said was coming. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about that, but love to hear what uh, you saw in the market last week. Then we'll talk about next week. Yeah, we can. We should talk about the um, the talking head reaction to what Bullard said, okay. because that that to me was even more interesting than what Bullard said. What Bullard said wasn't all that surprising. No, I th- again, I, I'm trying to help my audience understand the Fed really only has two tools to kind of because their goal is still a soft landing, right? right. It's, it's it's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely, but that's their goal. They would love that. So part of it is raising rates, which you get about every six weeks. They are going to slow down. I think we've got our last 75. The next one will be 50. But let's be very clear. They have a, fu- a microphone or a bullhorn or whatever you want to call it. And some of them are going to, yeah, they're going to talk nonsense. So Bullard really thinks we're going to go to five, five and a quarter. I think five, five and a quarter is close enough. But then he just drops out there like, you know, a big turd in the punch bowl and says, could be as high as seven and then walks away. And then all the media and talking heads go ape shit because nobody is like the highest I heard before Bullard seven is I heard a couple people say six. And that was before CPI came in low, before PPI came in low, because nobody's talking six after those two numbers. But then Bullard just goes, plop, seven, exit stage left. The the talking heads went bananas. Yeah, and that's all they they could could focus on. Yeah. That's all they could focus on was that he said that he mentioned 7%. That's not actually what he said. What What he actually said was, there is a method for determining the range of interest rates in order to get inflation back to 2%. Mm -hmm. It's called the Taylor method. Yes. And if you apply the Taylor method, what it tells you is the range should be anywhere between five and a quarter and 7%. Correct. And that, and as soon as he said the 7%, he didn't say 7%. He said, he says a range. range. Right. And 7% is the, on the high end of that range. The upper bound. Yes. Right. But everybody grabbed that 7%. And now oh, they're he, saying, oh, the Fed's going to 7%. That's well, not let's what he just, said. Let's just play the 7% out. Because again, this is what the market did. If the Fed's at seven, just if the Fed's at seven, the 10 years got to be at eight and a quarter, eight and a half. And then 30 year mortgages are 10 and a half, 11. I mean, right. that's that's why the market went wacky. Um, there's a uh, Starwood Capital. Let me see if I have my notes in front of me. Barry Sternlich was brought into CNBC. He's one of the billionaires that they parade uh, that whines and cries and talks about the Fed doing this and that. So Barry came in again, I think Thursday, might have been Friday, talking about the Fed is committing economic suicide. And just talking all of this negativity. And all I could think about looking at Barry, because, again, he's Starwood Capital, which is a real estate firm is I bet you got some short-term debt. I bet you got some bridge debt without rate caps. I bet you are feeling the flames (laughs) of higher rates. So you're trying to do everything you can to talk down rates because your book is getting hurt. Yeah, I I don't think uh, Barry gives a rat. It will get hurt even more as the rates go up. Oh, exactly. He did buy a rate cap or whatever. Again, who knows? Right. We all know that talking heads on TV talk about their book. So my guess is Barry's book's a little interest rate sensitive. That's what I think is going on. Yeah, for him, that's probably true. But I think uh, just just like as always occurs, and it's not just the financial press, it's not just CNBC, it's mainstream media in general. Oh, sure. What sells magazines, newspapers, clicks, YouTube fear. videos, fear. Fear. Yeah. fear, that's what sells. So they're going to throw as much fear out there as possible. 
So, I mean, could so, it go uh, to 7%? Yeah, it could. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, yeah, could. Is it likely? Eh, I don't think so. Could? Nah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So what else did you see last week? I'm still I'm still saying five. I don't think it's going to even make it to five and a quarter. No, I think it's five. I think the number's five. I've been, I've been on five for 60 days now, maybe right. 75. It's like, I think I, I basically it's going to be 50 in December. Then they're going to do a quarter three times and boom, that's five. We're done. Um, I don't think they even get there. Right. So what, what do they do then? They, think, they're going to I do think, 50 uh, in December. I, I think the recession is going to be rearing its ugly head sometime in March timeframe. Okay. So I think the first meeting is in February. So they, so you, you maybe think 50, 25 and done. Yeah. So that'll get us to what? Four and a half. So I think they're at three and three quarters now. Close three, to that. Yeah. 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 Um, we're at 3.8 right now. Yeah. We'll be they at, split the 50, difference. Yeah. With 50 will be a four and a quarter. Right. And another quarter is four and a half ish. Maybe, yeah. maybe they make it to four and three quarters. Yeah, I think I think that's a decent range. I think I think it is four and a half to five. If I were to kind of pick it, but yeah, I I think they're done by March. I've said that as well. I, I think, think what they would, would like to see, and this goes back to the soft landing. I think a soft landing for the Fed means we can get it to four and a half, four and three quarters, and then we can hold it there for the and year. Yes, and yes, the the economy will start to suffer, start to slow down. Jobs will, you know. Mm-hmm. The unemployment rate will go up, yep, and we'll be we'll have more layoffs, mm-hmm. and then we'll just hold it, and then we Agreed. can hold it, and not yeah, raise but, but not lower. I and totally not do agree. anything. Totally for a long, agree. Got, for a yes. long time, as much as a I year. agree. Oh, it'll be a year. I've been saying that for a while. They yeah, want to get what, to this plateau and just stop. Just 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 let the let the system work itself out. Right, but what I think will actually happen. Yep. Is as soon as the recession starts, they'll be like, oh, we, we might have to cut rates. No, nah, not going to happen. You watch. I don't think so. You watch. So, so this, you know, all, I like, all of a sudden, I, all of a sudden it, the, the, the speed or the, the curve of rates. Yeah, we've done it too will fast. Will be replaced, we will be replaced by the speed of unemployment. Maybe. Maybe I I actually think unemployment is going to surprise people. I think it's going to be very much a white collar recession. Yeah, uh, not a blue collar recession. Uh, so it, it it's going to be different. It'll be very different, I think, than the, the traditional so, recession. Yeah, that's interesting. It brings up uh, an interesting topic, which I actually had in my newsletter. Um, I'm I'm actually looking for it right now. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me share. Not, yeah, I was going to say. You're no, no, sure. I know. I'm, I'm trying to find it first before I share. Quite yet. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is this actually comes from uh, a newsletter that I get mm-hmm. called um, Real Investment Advice. Okay. So here's the yield curve. All right. So this goes back to two, three recessions. Okay. All right. So here's the 1999 one. See the yield curve right there. You see the yield curve in 2007, and you see the yield curve today. And this is the two and 10, not the three month and 10? This is the 10 and two, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. The 10 year and two year spread. Yep. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I didn't see that. Now, what you'll notice is that the recession doesn't occur until after the yield becomes uninverted. Oh, wow. Look at that. Right. Six to nine months after the yield curve is uninverted is when the recession starts. How long? So one of the things, and you may have the data here, how long was that yield curve inversion? Because not only are we seeing kind of max spread, but what's the duration? Was that like nine months it was inverted? I don't know the scale. So this one here in 99, this is January. This is probably, that's probably, that's probably nine, nine to 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. It was inverted right there. And then the one for... For the 08, I mean, here's the 08 recession is way over here. Yeah. This one, this one was inverted and, and then uninverted and then inverted again. Mm-hmm. So there, that was probably a year and a half. Yeah, that's interesting. But the important thing is that the recession doesn't start until the yield curve is uninverted. Oh, great. We're a long way oh. from that still. No, we are a lot. If that's true, then shoot, it might be June or July. Yeah, that's right. Uninverted. Yeah. 
That's right. I mean, you can see a little tiny little uninvert or tiny inversion right here before the 2020 <laughs> recession. Yeah. 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 Didn't last very long. So then let's go down to this next one. Same newsletter. It's actually the same part of it that I that I copied. Okay. This is the previous financial crisis. Now this one goes back to 76 and again the gray area is the recessions. Yeah. The black is the federal funds rate. And again, what you will notice is before the recession occurs, something blows up. The Fed starts cutting before oh, the recession. I didn't notice that. I actually looked at the red dashed lines. These are just highlighting what, you know. Yeah. The red la dashed lines are where the recession begins. Got it. Well, no. The black, the black, yeah, the red, da, da, the red vertical line is where the recession begins. No, I think the red lines are highlighting events. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Dot com crash, credit crisis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. happens to coincide with the, well, not over here. But anyway, the, the gray is the recession. But the black is the Fed funds rate. And you'll notice that the Fed starts cutting rates before the recession. Yeah, you've brought that to us a couple of times. It's it's thought provoking. Yeah. Right. So the the yield curve uninverts before a recession starts. The Fed starts cutting rates before a recession starts. Yeah, I'm actually more fixated on the red lines because we haven't had the whoops yet. And everybody's looking at I actually think there's a liquidity crisis in commercial paper uh that I don't Could think be. enough people are talking about. Yeah, could be, and that, that's the question marks up here. You know, oh, I see next, the question mark. That's, what's the next that's... one going to be? Yeah, right. I think it's, I'm going to say it next... right here, right now, on November 20th. It'll be commercial paper tied to uh, office or retail. It's going to it's going to hurt. Yeah. Right. All right. And this um this green dot dash one is interesting too. That's the Fed funds exponential growth trend. Not sure what that's telling me. It's just going down. It's just taking the black line and smoothing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's all it's doing. It's basically saying that the the when the Fed cuts rates, they can continually cut lower and lower and lower to the last. We've time had forty grow. years of this, and that great that green curve is about to point up. <laughs> we yeah. we've well, hit bottom. It it's about to go it the can't other way. Go, it can't go much lower. Right. No, exactly. We're it's just going to go up and then it's going to reset and then we'll get back into the 40 year pattern again. It's so the next part of this is really what I wanted to point out because it's very interesting. Uh, I don't know if uh, folks picked this up in my newsletter. I tried to actually highlight it to point it out. But so the economy is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Right. We talked about jobs. Jobs are strong. Retail, retail sales, were retail, strong. retail came in pretty good. Yeah, the, above the economy itself is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So e economic data says no recession. Here's right. real personal income. There's employment. Oh, I'm glad you have this here. These these people always ask me. They're like, "What do you mean there was no recession last year? We had two quarters in a row." And I'm like, "Guys, that is a rule of thumb. It's a rule of thumb that has worked for 50 years. But it is a rule of thumb. These economists look at these metrics." These right. exact six metrics. So I'm glad you have these here. Yeah. So this is this is the economy, right? right. Real consumer spending, real wages, real GDP. Yep. Right. Yep. Here's the numbers: five percent income growth, two point six annual, etc. Mm -hmm. And then here's the kicker that may hopefully people caught. My apologies, I forgot to add the x-axis to the charts above. Not really. It was intentional. The time frame is 1991 to 1999. Ah, look at you. Look at that. Nice. All right. Yep. So those that say this time is different because the economy is strong. Yep. No, it's not different. Mm -hmm. This was this was 91 to 99. Yeah. Look at that. How about December 2007 when the next recession officially started? Here's here's what the numbers look like. Yeah. Economy was strong. Yeah. I like it. That's good. So the economy is strong going into a recession. So there will be a recession. Here's my conclusion. That is likely to close, likely close to ending rate hikes and going into yeah. the strongest period of the market. It will probably climb higher into year end. I don't think it will return to the previous highs, but it could. 
Sure. Going into 2023 will be a very cautious time as a recession is very likely and the market may sell off again into the worst period, May 1st to October 1st. So as a stock guy, uh, and we're talking about a recession, I actually think there's two kinds of recessions. There's one that the average consumer feels in and around us, but there's also something called an earnings recession. Right. Um, that maybe we should talk about because again, that, that we could actually, you know, have slightly positive GDP but still have an earnings recession. Yeah. Want to talk about that? Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and the stock market is based on earnings. Correct. Yeah, the stock market will feel. I guess the point of my question is, there's there's a type of earnings recession that may hurt the stock market where the overall economy is spits and spits you know, just moving along ever so slowly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is uh this is from VectorVest. They do an earnings update every earnings season. Mm. Okay. It says 94% of the companies have reported results with 69% beating earnings, 71% reporting revenues above estimates. Yeah. What do they have about the forecast? Did they say anything? Let me see. Um, it doesn't well forecast oh, that average earnings growth remained at 15 percent per year wow that's so it didn't crazy. change it stayed the same yeah so Market if you're going to see an earnings recession that that number needs to come down that 15. yeah so vector vest has a a graph that shows earnings trend indicator it fell another 0 0.02 points to a level of 1.12 since it remains above one the market is in a bull market scenario hmm. So start, as long as that stays above one, but it actually, I can actually maybe even show it here. Let's see. So this is the earnings graph up here in, in blue. Okay. You can see of the that, S and P. Of uh, this is this is just the, yeah. No, it's more than the S and P. It's all earnings. Oh, all earnings. Okay. So VectorVest tracks 9,000 stocks. Oh, so it's the 9,000 stocks. Got right. It. Okay. Right. So you can see here it's above one still. Here's the one area. Yeah, but it's right coming about, way down. Right yeah. about, right about here. There's one right there. Yeah. All right. So you can see it went up into January, the beginning of this year. Then it kind of leveled off and now it's coming down. Hmm. So that's, that's heading towards the earnings recession that you're talking about. That makes sense. But I mean, we're not there yet. No, 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 no. It's it's I just want people watching this to realize we need to think about there's really two kinds of recession. And there's a earnings recession and then there's an economic recession. Yeah, that's right. And the earnings recession is the one that will affect the stock market. Without question. Yeah. So okay. Very cool. So that's interesting. Um, let's just take a look at uh some of the charts there's there's some things on the charts that are concerning me a bit mm. this is the um this is the institutional rotation chart oh look at that right so you can see all, all of these you know discretionary versus staples nasdaq versus s p technology growth versus value this dotted line right here is from the june low right so they are all the either right at or below the June low. Mm -hmm. All right. And we've had another low since June. Yeah. yeah so we had this low here where they kind of got down the, the technology actually really went below it. Yeah. It was but as the market's right? been climbing recently, these haven't come off of it very much. Interesting. So the rotation isn't really occurring. Rotation back into growth or technology hasn't really been occurring. Mm. Or not to uh, any big extent. Right. In the next section, next session, we'll we'll look at some uh, relative charts of different industry groups and see how they're performing. So that concerns me a bit. This is the VIX, which has been looking great. So you can see the rally we had back here from the June low up until middle of August. Yeah. So about two months right back here. Mm -hmm. You see the green here on the VIX. So whenever this turns green, that usually is an indication of a, you know, nice longer term rally. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah. So I actually drew this green arrow from where that started right to the low right here. So we potentially could still have some upside left. 
but look what we're running up against. Yep. Which is actually even more apparent in this chart. Ooh, look at that. That's a weekly chart. This is the downtrend since the beginning of the year. Every time we come up to the this downtrend line or the 200-day moving average, which right now they're both at the same place. Wow, look at that. It gets rejected and it heads back to the bottom. Is that a hammer, that last, whatever that's this, called? That, this last one is a um, or falling spinning top, a spinning top spinning doji. Top. Wow. Which, I, um, that's a new one. Yeah, actually, spinning for those that... Doji. For those that get my newsletter. Sorry, I didn't read it this week. I was busy yesterday. Yeah, no but problem. I read it most weeks. Oh, there so it is. This is the same chart right here. And this is where I said ended with a spinning top doji. I nice. actually put a link. I actually put a link in here that will explain what a spinning top doji is. Oh, nice. It basically means indecision. So if you think about it, it opened. It. This is a weekly chart, too, by the way. Yep. So this is during the week. It opened, it traded up to just about the 200-day, came back and then traded down an equal distance and ended wow. at about the same place that it started. So you've got bulls, you've got bears, and they, they kind of neutralized each other. I like it. So what that means is there's indecision. Now, a lot of people see those and they'll say, that there's one right back here too, by the way. See that oh, one? Look at that. Yep, I do. All right. So a lot of people will look at those and say spinning top dojis is an indication of a trend change. Mm. That means if we were going up, then we're going down. Well, if we were going down, then now we're going to go up. Oh, that makes but that's sense. not exactly how to read these. Oh, okay. It means indecision. It means the market can't decide which way to go. Now, the market has been going up. So now if all of a sudden it doesn't know which way it should go, you kind of think that that means it's going to start going down. And a lot of times it does, but it could just keep going up. Hmm. It just means indecision. Very so you cool. don't know what's going to happen until you get the second one. So you look back here, the second one, which was the next week, that now it's very clear, it actually ended below the 200-day moving average. That, now it's it clear broke, which broke direction down. it's going. So that's okay. the indication to get out and you could avoid all of this pain all the way yeah. down to so, the gym. So quick question about next week. It's a short week. I know the Dow, I know right. the market is closed on Thursday. Is it closed on Friday as well? It's uh, it will close at one o'clock on Friday. So it's a half day. Okay. Yeah. So it's open in the morning and we'll close at one. Uh, generally speaking, I'm guessing it's a light week. We have some earnings. We got Dell and zoom and deer. Yeah, in general, it's a pretty light week. I mean, most of the earnings are pretty much done. Yeah, 94% according to your uh, newsletter. Right. Um, I think I have, I thought I had in here. Yeah, it's okay. I've, I've just. Yeah, here we go. This is oh, um, this is from uh, Stock Traders Almanac. So this is, this, this is the week we're in right here. Yeah. You can see the day before Thanksgiving and that shortened half a day trading are both bullish days. Okay. Historically. Yeah. And then the Monday after that, or actually the Tuesday after that is also also a bullish day. Hmm. Now the the trend for let's see if I can find this here. It's that's December's trend. Here's November's trend. So we just ended right here. Options expiration was on Friday. Mm-hmm. So you can see this is this goes back 21 years. So you can see 21 years this week before options expiration typically is a down week, and we kind of had a down week last week, right? right? Even though we had some up days and some down days, you know that indecision yeah. candle. Yep. We we basically ended down. We ended lower at the end of the week. But you see what happens for the rest of November. Oh, should be fun to watch. Right, Thanksgiving week, 21 year performance. These are, these are all the indexes here. So the rest of this month typically is a nice uptrend. Nice. Let's look at the dollar. Yeah. Dollar is finally breaking. Yeah, that continued. Yeah, that's, yep. yes, yes it did. Dollar continued down. There's a rate of change right there. It's definitely broken. 
And then you see gold and the dollar side by side right here. Yeah, we're we're almost over, man. This is all just telling me the Fed's almost done. Right. And here's a 10-year treasury, which also continues to come down. That rolled over. Very and then cool. the S&P right here. So if the 10-year keeps coming down, then the S&P should keep going up. Nice. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, that one we showed. This is a, a closer end view. So again, here's that downtrend line. Yep. We're, we're getting close to it. We're getting close to that 200 day, 4,100, right around this area, 4,100. I like it. So we had a little, little decline down to 3,900, which is support. Started to go back up. But will we break through this? Right. That is the biggest question. Yep. Can we get like above it. this downtrend line? Okay. So that's the thing to watch next week or two. Here's the CPI, talking about inflation. This is the CPI. This is the headline and the core side by side. Okay. So headlines on the left, core is on the right. Got it. And you can see the headline kind of flattened out and started back up again right here. Mm -hmm. And then core is just kind of trending higher. So the these are delayed. These are monthly. That's actually weekly, but the numbers only come out monthly. Right. That's why it's just a single dot. So it's delayed a little bit. So the next one probably will show these coming down some. Okay. And on that note, this is the CRB right here next to PCE. So PCE is what the Fed really watches. Yeah. I keep telling all my audience, it, if you're going to look at one number, it's PCE core. We've got right. they, the Fed is going to get the funds rate above PCE core, in my opinion. Right. That's that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but you can see the CRB, which is the commodity index, uh -huh. continues to fall. Yeah. And then and I think I'm going to I think I have something on the next session to show that a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Um, Let's show your newsletter so people can get a hold of this. Oh, uh, yeah. Amazing. And there's two two more things I want to show after that. But um, oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Newsletter. If anyone's interested in getting the newsletter, it's free. Just send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And I'll send you last week's newsletter and then I'll include you on the future ones. Awesome. And if you ever want to be taken off because it's cluttering your inbox, <laughs> or for whatever for whatever reason, yeah, whatever reason, just yeah. let me know and I'll remove you. It's pretty easy. There you go. All right, show us the final two cartoons things. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two more, real quick. One is this. This is the freight data. Oh yeah, I actually saw this last week. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. This. So this is this is the cost of a container, freight yep. container to ship from. Um, this one I think is Europe to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. or Chinese. And actually, this one is, this is the overall, this is a, the, a overall trend. Yeah. All right, so you can see right here, the important thing is, you know, the we're pandemic getting started. We're closer and closer to normal. That's right. Pandemic started right about here. Mm -hmm. April, March, about March of 2020. And you can see how fast it went up. Yeah, bananas. So this this is just one visual of why inflation is happening. There's a lot of reasons why inflation is going up, not the least of which is the federal government spending money like it's <laughs> like it's spending, free, <laughs> spending spending money like their FTX. Oh no, that's <laughs> too soon, too soon. But the, you know, the other reason is that. Uh, yeah, just the, the pandemic yeah. itself, you know, yeah. um, demand dropped off the cliff. So supply had to stop. Yeah. Supply was still coming. Right. But yeah. because they couldn't unload the, the tankers. Yep. Then the price of a tanker, price of a container shot up to the moon. And all of the manufacturers uh, or the retailers, they all had to account for that. So prices yeah. had to go up. But now it's getting back to normal. Yeah. The other one that kind of highlights this, and I think this is the one that really highlights the, the whole thing, what happened with, with the pandemic better than anything okay. else. 
All right. This is it. this is the Baker Hughes oil rig cap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see right here at the peak, that is March of 2020. That's just before the whole economy shut down. Yeah. Right? They shut everything down and people weren't driving. People weren't, factories didn't need oil. So yep. what what are the oil companies going to do? They're not going to keep these rigs running. Yeah, They're not going to keep pumping if nobody's buying oil, right? Mm -hmm. So they shut them all down. It's pretty easy to shut down rigs. You can see how fast it dropped. Yeah. It's not so easy to bring them back online. No, it's very, yeah, it's, yes, you have to be precise and it's not. It takes, very, it takes a long time to bring these back online. So I think this is a, a great graphic to help understand how the pandemic affected inflation. So where are we now? Can yeah. you show us the far right? What's the top number? Oh, I guess it's um, right there on the chart, 623. Yeah, 623. But more importantly, is this is this is the peak just before pandemic right there. We're so not we're, even we're not near there yet. No, we're like we're 91 91 percent the way there. Right. Really. Right. Okay. So, you know, this is I think this is a good illustration of what the pandemic really did. Yeah, it, we're not really adding them very fast. It's slowing down the rate. We, of you can't you can't add them. You can't add them nearly as fast as you can shut them down. No, totally agree. Yeah. So they shut everything down because the economy was shut down. Yeah. But then they're trying to bring it back online. And this is a, a typical, you know, supply and demand 101. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool, Dan. Well, thank you for doing this. I, I can't believe you still do this for so long. Every week you give a, my audience a chance to get your newsletter. Uh, sure. Thank you very much. I look forward to video number two. Thanks, bud. All right. You bet.